This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's Sick CGB. As long as the sick beanie is on, I'm still not feeling quite myself. But on the super, super bright side, I had the best sleep I've had in several nights. So I'm starting to feel better. So you, you don't have to think I need to go to the ER right now. It's, it's, I can tell it's turning around. I feel better today than yesterday for the first time in about three days. So progress. Now I'm gonna stop talking about being sick. But if you watch the intro to the video and you see the beanie, you know my voice is going to sound a little weird. My play might be a little sketch. All right, today we're doing Granted Fires, which is a fires deck built around Fae of Wishes, the Granted Sorcery. When I did my Cavalier of Flame Fires deck, my Oketra Fires deck a few weeks ago, I said there were three types of fires lists, and enough people expressed interest in seeing all three and why they're different and talking about that, that I've done that. The Friendly Fires video from a few days ago showed the Super Friends fire list, and this is the Granted fire list. In my opinion, these decks shouldn't go together too much. I could understand adding one or two Fey of Wishes to the other builds to get the Granted synergy, since you're not using your sideboard in best of one anyway, but this build is specifically built around using the Granted sorcery as much as possible. What Granted does is lets you go into your sideboard and pick a non-creature card of your choice, and Fires of Invention lets you cast that for free, and then lets you cast a second spell for free, which means that Granted is going to go get a spell, and then you get to play it right away, and we'll get into the targets. This version is the closest to like a traditional control deck of the Fires variants. The Planeswalker Fires deck turns the corner super fast and attacks the opponent with Sarkin, ending the game pretty quickly. The Cavalier deck ends the game even faster, often killing on turn 5, whereas this deck probably goes to turn 10 or later because the idea is to grind it out with Granted and Fires of Invention, casting this Fey of Wishes, returning it to your hand, casting Granted over and over and over until the opponent is low on resources, at which point you can win the game either with the Kenrith Return Kings that I put into the main deck or with a combo option from the sideboard which we'll get to in a second, but um, because it is a traditional control deck or closer to one, we have a lot more card draw and removal in the main deck as opposed to threats. So Shimmer and Drawn from Dreams, make sure that you always have gas going with your fires and that you find the combo. Justice Strike, Deafening Clarion, Time Wipe, and Prison Realm all keep the opponent's stuff from killing you. Prison Realm I found com particularly important for dealing with Planeswalkers that come down before you find fires. Teferi Time Raveler is great against any decks that use counter magic and is kind of a must run as long as there is counter magic in the format and it is just good tempo. We see control decks running Teferi all the time. Also instant speed board wipes and drawn from dreams and granted is nice. And Kenrith is our win con and our value play although you gain a lot of life and draw a lot of cards with Kenrith more than with other decks. Now we'll dive into that sideboard and talk about the cards over here. You've seen this in my sideboards uh, using Fae of Wishes in the past. That is Karn the Great Creator. Karn can minus two to go fetch Sorcerer's Spyglass and Graft Digger's Cage. This is my trifecta of hate against the Cat Oven decks. So if I have enough time, I will Fae of Wishes to go grab Karn. Karn shuts down the oven and the food tokens just by being on the battlefield. Then you can fetch Spyglass to also turn off food for or not food, but um, Witch's Oven, or the Cat, for when Karn leaves the battlefield, or something else entirely. You can shut down Vraska, if that's something you're concerned about, and Graft Digger's Cage shuts it, shuts it down as well. There are also plenty of situations where you may want to only fetch the Cage or the Spyglass, a Planeswalker that is bothering you, Arclight Phoenix or Experimental Frenzy for the Cage or Reanimator, things like that. There's one copy of True Love's Kiss, I don't have cheap removal in this wishboard like I usually do in my wishboards because I have so much removal in the, in the deck already. True Love's Kiss is for the fires mirror primarily when your opponent's going to get a fires ahead of you and you want to play fires, exile their fires. Kaya's Wrath is a sweeper. I don't think I need to overly explain that one. 
Two copies of Enter the God Eternals. I went up to two because this is the best thing that you can be doing against Red, Aggro, and Gruel. Is just slam Enter the God Eternals, remove their thing, make a giant monster. Doing this for two turns in a row will usually shut the door on them, and sometimes that's what you need to do. Nicole Bolas Dragon God is part of our game ending combo. The minus eight, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game, combines with plane wide celebration, which proliferates four to put four counters on it. So the idea is on one turn, you will cast Fay of Wishes and you will use Granted to go get the Bolas. And you will either return the Fay of Wishes or cast a second Fay of Wishes to go get the plane wide celebration. The next turn, you will play the Bolas and you will play the Celebration. If the opponent has no cards in hand and no way to interact with the Bolas, it's totally acceptable, by the way, for you to just run out the Bolas early and plus it to draw a card. But it is a one-turn kill if you set it up right. Thought Distortion is not counterable and can empty all those pesky counters from the opponent's hand, so it's very good against an opponent who might be holding up a Dovin's Veto against you. Chandra is also uncounterable, so these are kind of the core against Control and Simic Flash if you get a granted cast, this is what you fetch. There are some big brain control players who will let you resolve the granted, planning to counter the card you fetch, and then you fetch something uncounterable. Haha. <laughs> Casualties of War? Four copies. There are plenty of matchups that are kind of mid-range or grindy, like Fire's Mirrors and Food Mirrors, where honestly you can win just by fetching Casualties of War over and over and over and over and never stop casting it. So I went all the way up to four copies, because that is how this control deck grinds opponents to dust. Casualties of War every turn for about four turns in a row or maybe every other turn. The way that you set up your Fey of Wishes is something you have to plan in advance. You have to know when to hold cards in your hand to continue setting up your Fey of Wishes. Normally this deck only has uh, about seven lands on the battlefield if it also has a fires. You may need more than that if you're in a long game without fires. But with fires, you only need seven lands on the battlefield max for the plane wide celebration. Therefore, you should hold lands so that you can set up your Fey of Wishes. How we set up our Fey of Wishes and plan for turns in advance has a big deal um, and a lot to do with the success of the deck. So you'll see some of that in the video today, I bet. And let's dive in. I've talked enough. Let's let the Fey of Wishes granted fires nonsense begin. JJ Barrel. JJ Barrel. 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 Two lands. What is going on? But it's not a bad hand. It doesn't have fires, but it has so much early interaction if we draw the third land. It doesn't look like it'll de be defeated easily, and we're on the draw. Our Fable Passage can get a white source to immediately unlock the whole hand. Starting from turn two, I think that makes it keepable. If like this Deafening Clarion and this Justice Strike were Kenrith's, I don't think you keep the hand. I think that's an example of when it would be too clunky. Another non-land off the top. All right, come on now. Mountain, okay. Is it fires as well? Hmm, it's Aristocrats that does run Fabled Passage, okay. So, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is kind of good for us. It means that Deafening Clarion gets set up very well. I think we'll get blue. I don't have a lot of use for double blue, to be honest. I do have use for double white and time wipe. Maybe it's red, so that any untapped land I can play the Clarion without, um, without shocking. Since the opponent's very likely to play out some creatures here. This is a case where waiting for the information with Fabled Passage actually makes a difference because depending what next turn's play is, I should get blue if it's going to be Teferi or Prison Realm, and I should get red if it's going to be Deafening Clarion. Because that way, if I draw an untapped land of any color off the top, I don't have to shock to cast that card. It can save you two life. So here comes Witch's Oven. Yay. Everybody's favorite. Our opponent attacks for one. Very annoying. I want this card from Witch's Oven very 
So uh, also the fact that our opponent kept this hand, it's a two lander, it has priest as oven. They must have claimed the firstborn, just something to keep in mind when we think about casting Fae of Wishes. So we're going to play Teferi. Actually, no, Justice Strike doesn't kill this, but maybe we just hold up Justice Strike if the opponent draws their third land. Yeah, maybe playing Teferi isn't even good here. I guess we can bounce the Witch's Oven, but then Teferi just dies. We could play Teferi and plus Teferi and think it, and have it for next turn. I like that best. We'll play Teferi plus Teferi. The opponent attacks Teferi. It's like Teferi gained me life. But we're going to want to draw the card from Teferi probably next turn. Our opponent might have Angrath's Rampage now that I think about it. Maybe I just... So if they have Rampage, I'm really going to want to draw that card. Let's bounce the oven. We might, we're might we going to lose the Teferi, which is fine, but we get the card. And this way, if they have Rampage and they don't draw another land, their oven is off the battlefield for a turn, we can Prison Realm the Priest, and they don't get the food. No, nope. they replay the oven, and they have a Passage. Teferi down. Okay, we drew the land, but it's a tap land. So next turn is very likely that we're playing Fires. I really want another land here, but granted isn't bad. We can get Karn, we can get True Love's Kiss. So next turn we're playing Fires and granted most likely, although we might play a Clarion. So the question is whether or not to use Prison Realm this turn when we already know that we want our top card. And I think the answer is no. Let's hold up Justice Strike. There might be something worth Justice Striking. I'm guessing there's a Mayhem Devil. Midnight Reaper. So we could Clarion and have our opponent draw two next turn. Or, I think I like Fires and casting Granted right away. And then having Karn set up and we could cast both sides of Karn next turn. All right, here is Justice Strike targeting Midnight Reaper. The opponent will get a card and a food because they get to throw it in the oven. Our incremental oven value, man. It's just too good. It's so good. Here's fires. Let's go granted. And yeah, I think it's either Karn or, or the True Love's Kiss. The opponent only has the one oven right now, and maybe drawing a card is just better. Yeah, because we need to hit our land, so I like fetching the kiss. Let's give him a little smooch. See? It's me. It's CGB. Smooching something dead. I don't know. I often think about moving my webcam because I can't, like, easily show art to all of you. But, to be honest, I'm not the biggest art person on cards anyway. I'm not the person who goes into, like, all the art and examines it. Leave that to Merchant. All right, let's kiss the oven. Gross. Hey, we hit the land. That's sweet. That means we can go get Enter the God Eternals if we want, but it's hard to see something better than playing Clarion here. Light him up. We're going to take some Judith triggers to the face. This is where the deck would be happy with a Castle Vantress, something to do with our mana. I only run two though, because having untapped lands is just so important in the aggro meta. Drawn from Dreams is nice. Our opponent, just on a Priest of the Forgotten Gods, is not particularly scary. It can be a good time to go fetch something. It feels like Enter the God Eternals could be fun. 
But I have so much removal in my hand already, it doesn't feel necessary. So instead, I think I hang on to this and play Drawn from Dreams and say a prison realm on this priest. I'm not even that afraid of the priest. Maybe I just play the Fae of Wishes. Ooh, Teferi's a good one. Teferi's a good answer. And other than that, we'll grab a Shimmer so we can keep going through the deck. I would expect that the opponent will replay something and give it haste with Claim the Firstborn and make Teferi die. But that's okay. Setting them back a turn and drawing a card is all I'm really looking for. And yay, we hit the land. I think this is a good game to try to set up the Bolas combo, which means I'm probably going to get to seven lands, then stop playing them so I can bounce Fae of Wishes when the time is right. All right, they replay the priest. Okay, we're going to need a Deafening Clary in this turn, which means we can use one of our spells to go get Bolas, I think. There's the Claim the Firstborn to take out the Teferi. What else is in their hand? Probably more claims. We would have seen Angras Rampage if they had that. Oh, we're activating Priest. Interesting. Ignoring Teferi. Okay. Oh, that's a good draw. The very value draw. So, we'll plus you. Here goes nothing. The opponent can definitely use their Priest to take out the Kenrith if I play that this turn. So maybe I am just, maybe I'm just supposed to prison realm the priest. See if we have a seventh land on top for the combo. Oh, it's another fires. All right, I'm just going to play Kenny then. Kenny's going to take over. So we can gain life once or draw a card and we may as well hit for five. And that will be my turn. Being at nine, I think life gains better than a card here. There's the Rampage, okay. Either they just drew it in their top two or they didn't want to use it on a Teferi. They don't seem very concerned about Teferi. But yeah, I think heal is the way to be. We have enough cards. Our life total is what's at stake, and haste creatures are one of the weaknesses of the fire's deck. Alright, so with gutter bones on the field, let's play this Fay of Wishes. Let's use Granted and start setting up the combo. We can grab Bolas first. We still need another land for the celebration, after all. What am I discarding? Probably Shimmer. It's a little bit slow here. And a Clarion. There's the Claim, so we'll bounce this to our hand. If we actually run out of gas drawn from Dreams, gas is you right back up. We still need one more land for the celebration. Now the opponent attacks to fairy because it can minus to draw a card. And Fabled Passage Go leaves us in a nice spot. So we needed to draw the land. I guess we can use Drawn from Dreams. That can fix it. Probably. Let's just say the odds are good. I've been seven cards deep when I needed one land to win the game and not found it before. It's happened. All right, so. We'll grab you, and I suppose another Granted. And we'll hit Granted. And we'll go get the Plane Wide Celebration. And I'm actually going to hold the land, just because I don't want the opponent to know I have the kill. It might affect their decision, like there might be a, well, they're going to win the game next turn, but not if they don't draw a land, so maybe I'll make this play instead of that play. 
You never know. Here's a devil. Here's a rampage. Okay. They were definitely stockpiling Angrass Rampage. They they played this game kind of honestly, they played this game very kind of slow and value centered, like they wanted to grind. And then we are just going to OTK them. Oh wait, they have Fabled Passage. It can mess with Bolas, right? Yeah, they can get Oh, I see. So what they can do is with Bolas with the plain wide celebration proliferate on the stack, it puts Bolas up to nine loyalty. They can sacrifice Fable Passage, sacrifice food to deal two damage to the Bolas. So we need to wait one more turn. And that's okay. That's fine with me. It's, it's Clary and the opponent. And I don't know how they would get nine haste damage out of nowhere, but let's just play out a Fae of Wishes as a blocker. Say go. And make sure they don't have a legendary creature, as that's the one thing that can make your bolus be a massive oops. And uh, yeah, that is the GG's. Let's set, let's set it off. Here is Bolas. Here is Celebration. Proliferate, 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 proliferate. You could also gain life with one of them. If you wanted to. No, you can't. It's like a perfect date. My bad. I forgot. <laughs> bows to me. Bow to me. Rah. Yeah, Nan. Bolus. That's not a good hand, is it? I mean, it has fires. Draw two lands out of four cards. Like a 50-50 split. And that's about what's in the deck. Maybe it's not crazy. But the opponent is showing, like, these lightning bolt sleeves. They're probably aggressive. I guess I have to take a mulligan. And I'm kind of rewarded. Let's keep this. Let's put the time wipe away and hope that Clarion's good enough. That's a good draw. I don't think Justice Strike is good. The opponent looks like they're on Grixis Fires. That's about the only deck right now that runs Water Grave. We're not advantaged in that matchup. They have Thought Erasure, we don't. So, if, But we didn't get turn 2 Thought Erasure, so you're telling me there's a chance. We're also on the draw. Being on the draw is really bad in the fire's mirror. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Sure. Good times. Uh. All right. We've drawn nothing but land since the start of the game. I'm, I'm ready for something else, please. So we're probably going for True Love's Kiss with the Fae of Wishes. Let's see if the opponent's hand is so good that they have a powerful play here as well. Wow. Okay. So, um, I've, I've said a lot that in Jeskai there are three versions of Fires. There is a fourth, the fourth Fires deck, which is kind of this Jeskai plus black for um, Thought Erasure. It's actually more of a Grixis splash white for Teferi. Anyway, enough of that. Team Fires is, is working, but it's not our team. Mr. Very. Merveri. Okay, on the play, we really need this scry land to get us another land. Let's do it. Yay, a land. Hello. How are you? Okay. Do we run out the Fey? I don't think so. Let's just hold up a Justice Strike. Gateway Plaza. Well, that's something. Let's hope that you needed to play instance in this matchup. Because here's Teferi.
We'll plus to fairy. Nothing to minus on right now, and I don't need the card. Just hit a land drop. Next turn, we might have instant speed drawn from dreams or granted, which are both solid. If to fairy lives. Sacred Foundry tapped. All right, so plus go. And then we'll use what our opponent does with their turn to decide what we do with ours. If they play fires, we're probably Fae of Wishesing. Okay. Our opponent is all over the place, which is fun. Who knows what they'll do? We'll get to test my ability of playing against Brews. Wow. Remember when I said you were almost certain to hit a land last vi last uh, game, no, two games ago? This is seven cards deep in a 26 land deck, and we wouldn't have drawn land to drop five, like, ever. So what are we doing next turn? We're going to take fires for sure. After that, I would say let's take Drawn from Dreams and set up our next turn as well. Rather than play Granted when we're not sure what our opponent is doing. I really don't know what they're up to, but I feel like I should keep plussing Teferi. I feel like having Teferi on the field could still make a difference in this game. Castle Vantress. Fires of Invention. Drawn from Dreams. Fey and Fey. I want the land for the Casualties of War. If that's what I end up casting. So we'll grab one of these. And we have the land already to use a Castle Vantress, so I guess a Scry land is fine. Let's see if the opponent has removal for the Fires or the Teferi, or what they are up to at all. If they have a play they can make with all these colors and all this mana, there must be something powerful. And against decks that have huge, powerful endgames, our main goal is to just use Casualties of War to keep them off mana forever. Oh my god, am I going to Casualties of War? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Oh, this, if this doesn't bring a, this, this is going to hurt. I know exactly what I'm going to do. We're finally going to figure out what their deck does, that's for sure. Thought Distortion. Target opponent reveals their hand. Exile all non-creature, non-land cards from that player's hand and graveyard. What are you doing? Holy cow, we cut him down to three land. Liliana, Deafening Clear, it's some rather bizarre control deck. <laughs> uh, should probably just emote GG. All right, end the turn. They should have set up their castle to scry last turn. I don't know why they didn't. Might have helped. I mean, if you have your whole hand taken away from you, you'll look at the top of the deck. But yeah, this is some bizarre super friendly control deck. I'm sure they run fires as well. Well, that's a little late. Probably time to start the casualties. Don't need either of those. Pretty much the only thing we're looking for here are more drawn from dreams and face of wishes. We don't really need anything else. Shimmer's kind of low impact. See, we can bounce that. Just make the opponent play it again and again. Doesn't seem to do much. We don't want to descry our deck. A lot of people talk about deck thinning. Right now we don't want to descry it. It's actually putting three cards that we don't really want to draw back into the deck, so we don't sacrifice the passage. Let's go use Granted. Maybe we should just set up the kill. But nah. Kill is too good for them. Like I said, this deck is here to grind. It's here to grind. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. So when we play Fae of Wishes, Teferi can minus to bounce it. That can help us. The opponent plays the Temple of Epiphany of Scry 1. They kept on top. Worth keeping in mind. They have something they want. Don't really need any of that. 
Another land off the top is okay. We'll play you. Bounce you to the hand. Now we can play the granted right now. It's an option. I think instead we'll just run you out there. And then we can bounce it back by returning these lands or this justice strike. So I guess I'll keep hitting my land drops because I think I'm going to have too many. But yeah, it's fine. We have what we need. Unless fires goes away. I would probably keep a backup fires if I scry into one. Narset, that's a good card to keep. Now let's see what you find. It's a fairy. Okay. This isn't a fight. What are you gonna do? Bounce the fires, probably. It means that Fay of Wishes can attack and kill Teferi. Now, the good news is... Oh, no, we didn't plus Teferi. I was like, now we get to cast Granted at instant speed, but we don't, because we didn't plus Teferi. We minused it. The one time. The one time. Kenny? Oh, hey, Kenny. Sure. Actually, Kenny's probably exactly what you want to do after you play a Fires with this much mana available. Uh, so we're going to end up descrying our deck anyway. Let's do it the pain-free style. Do the haste. Die and die. Let's try this. Swamp off the top. Like I said, this deck doesn't kill quickly. This deck takes its time. If you are the if you like to play with your food, the deck often feels like the the game could still fall apart at any moment too. Because you're limited to two spells a turn, so you have to make them high impact. Or they have to go towards setting up the kill. This opponent might be hard to bolus kill because at any given time I could have the combo in my hand, but if I play bolus. Something bad could happen. Okay, they have a time wipe. I guess we'll gain the life or save the Fey. We'll save the Fey. Might as well do this now. That we descried our deck anyway. Save the time wipe because it buys another Fey of Wishes. Okay, we can Prison Realm the Teferi, we can Granted for... Do we want to try to push the Bolus thing? Maybe we do. I've got it. I could have also just Casualties again. Alright, we'll keep that, in case the opponent does draw a way to remove it. But yeah, let's start setting up the kill. Opponent thinking about an upkeep scry, but if they do it, we'll take their whole turn, so that's not really the play you want to make. Beacon. Scry. Sure. Two to the bottom. Yep. Let's uh, bonus scry our fires of invention. Celebration. Guess we put this out there, make our opponent top deck, because we have Celebration to get it back as long as they don't exile it. Actually, no. We'll just have another Granted set up. If uh, that way, we can answer whatever the opponent does. If they do build a board with something legendary, we can go get a Casualties of War, clean it up, and then kill them the next turn. They have to have a legendary creature or planeswalker. So a planeswalker might be something we don't have a removal available for right this second. 
And a beacon. That'll that's that'll be game. Wow, wow. All right. So, oh hey, they said it for me. Submit, 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 and ultimate, and that'll do it. Burkit, Burrick, 25, sure. And we've got two wishes, a Kenrith and a Wipe, and we're going first. This hand is, I don't know. I mean, I guess we have some early plays. It feels like it feels like a very strange hand, but I'll give it a try. We'll put some Fae of Wishes on the battlefield. I'm going to save my Fabled Passage. I'm not sure what to fetch yet. Our opponent does know what to fetch yet. Big brain. Let's run out one of these 1-4s just to have some battlefield position. We don't know quite what our opponent's up to. I probably won't run out the second one, though, but who knows. If the opponent has Legion's End, that would be terrible. Fortunately, that hasn't been a big part of the meta for some time. And it looks like we're in the food mirror, and they have the combo, so... Their opening draw was perfect. At first, I was excited that we might get to Prison Realm one of these. We really need to draw land. Let's say go. We don't need to crack this Fable Passage unless we're sure there's something that we want to Prison Realm because otherwise we can wait till we draw and then decide whether we want our red mana or our white mana. This matchup's good if we don't get land screwed. And, their, and if their draw isn't, you know, Trail of Crumbs pure godlike stuff. I mean, look at this. Okay, dude. Yeah, you're, you're having a party. All right, so still no good Prison Realm targets. Top deck land? Not good. Not good, friends. I guess we'll get clicked to death. give it one more turn to draw the land. Hello. There is a Fires of Invention. So our opponent's still two turns away from their casualties of war. We probably want to grant it into a Karn, but we can't play it this turn, so I don't want the opponent to know that's coming. So I think it's much better to resolve a Drawn from Dreams and make sure we have mana for the next few turns. We have another Fey of Wishes and a land. We could grab two lands. I think that's a bit much. Casualties of war is nice, but we don't have to do it right away. I think having another Fae of Wishes so that we have back-to-back -back Fae of Wishes turns is pretty good. And then if we top deck a land, we can go Karn into Casualties of War. I guess I... Yeah, I do need another blue to activate the castle. Trail of Crumbs, what do you got? That's rude. That's just mean. So, let's see. Once the fires is removed, we either top deck another fires or our deck is pretty dead in the water. Especially once the opponent adds a mayhem devil. So, fire's down. We did draw another land. It's probably time to go get the cage. Let's go ahead and fetch first. 
I guess we'll get another white. Or we have another white. But we only need single red in our whole deck. Yeah, if I need to time wipe next turn for something like a Corvald, I can do it without taking damage if I fetch a white. That's the other nice thing about having some colorless cards in the sideboard to fetch. It does make it so that you're not completely reliant on fires for those particular hosers. Yep, there's the Corvold. They're trying to do it fast, not mad at the opponent, mad at the invention of this. So Graph Digger's Cage says, creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. And players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. So in a nutshell, the cat can't come back. So, okay. Now the opponent still has the ovens turned on, so they're going to get a million card draw sacrifice triggers. It's going to feel glorious. That missed land drop, I think, changed everything. I really think we had this game, but... 26 lands and Shimmer is a possibility that we didn't draw, and no third land. Mm. Maybe the right play was to Prison Realm nothing and scry for that land drop, since it was so crucial. That is something I could have done differently. How much time do you, my friends, spend thinking about what you could have done differently compared to being upset about it? So, we can Time Wipe or we can Prison Realm this. If the opponent has another Brontodon, they can get back the Prison Realm. But if they have another Brontodon, we're in trouble anyway, because they can also blow up the cage. Time wiping it does get us a free granted, which is kind of nice. And we don't have ways to use our mana otherwise for the turn. But the opponent just drew a bunch of cards. They might put a lot of threats on the battlefield. So, I think I like the time wipe play. I'm sorry, I think I like the Prison Realm play. I did mean to cast the Prison Realm, if you're thinking I made an accident and then tried to say why I liked it. Okay. They can still sacrifice, by the way. You're, you're, the cat just won't come back. So they're getting an extra card draw here. They're thinking if they want to draw more cards, sure. Nope. They're happy with their hand. It's got seven cards in it. How bad could it be? So, I can attack now. Don't think I'll get hasty beats from these cats anymore. Our first point of damage dealt this game. We can play this tapped and say go. We may want to spyglass the oven, but I'm guessing the opponent will have a decent battlefield position once this turn is over. We're also in a really ugly spot for casualties of war. But if the opponent had that, they would have played it. See how they're holding the forest? They had the mana for it. Casualties of war would have been game over regardless. There's not much I can do about that. Mm-hmm. So now we need to shut these down. I guess it means I need to get Karn, but I'm still a mana away from being able to play Karn the same turn I fetch Karn, which is awkward. Maybe I play Kenrith and Smash. Surely the opponent has a Murderous Rider, but it does take up their turn. We just don't get much value out of Kenrith if we play Kenrith and Smash here. It's just five damage and it buys us a tempo turn. Let's see what's on top of our deck. It will help us make this decision. Another land. Well, 
Land number eight does let us fetch Karn and play Karn. So, okay. We're going to play a Kenrith. Kenrith is going to die probably a horrible death, but it will take at least some part of our opponent's turn. We'll give some haste. We'll smash. All right. Here we go again. Just can't seem to shut off the train. Yeah, they found Murderous Rider rather easily, didn't they? And now next turn is probably Rider Beanstalk Giant, I'm guessing. But if that leaves them without a good board position, we're free to go get Karn. Which leaves them at just like the 18 cards in their hand that we have to deal with. No problem. Magic is easy. Yep. Ow. What else you got? Maybe they're just going to say go and see even more cards with their trail of crumbs the endless value machine eventually they play casualties of war there's not much we can do besides hope they don't draw it or run it anymore that they sideboarded or don't play it for some reason I would love to cast some casualties of war. Not in the cards for me. There you are, buddy. Okay, opponent lets that resolve. Let's start killing some food. We could also minus for the spyglass, but I'm not going to. Yep, they can still get rid of it with trail, as you can see. It's not the funnest. They can't sacrifice the the. Uh, they can't sacrifice the foods, but they can still sacrifice them to the cats. It's kind of absurd how this just doesn't actually shut them down completely, but nothing does. There's our devil. I guess you have two foods. Now you have a passage to sacrifice. Maybe the opponent has second devil. Okay. <laughs> now they're thinking, all right. So they have one damage. They have cats. They can sacrifice that. So they have three damage to throw around. Let's see what they do with it. I guess their goose can still make food, right? Yeah, no reason not to. Four damage. Probably kill the Fae of Wishes then if they want to. Hmm, they're going after Karn. Okay, so if you're going to go after Karn, go after Karn. Ooh, nice. That's pretty good. Makes the time wipe juicier. Alright, this will be fun. I'm going to turn... Hold on. First we're going to attack them with the Fae of Wishes. Now we have to start holding lands, I think, to bring back our other phase. Going to animate their oven. So we get to time wipe it. And we have two blue open, that's good. So I can put out a 1-4. I could also cast another granted. 
I can go get a true love's kiss to remove one of the trail of crumbs, which isn't absolutely ridiculous. I have to shock to do it though. I don't think that's really worth it. So yeah. Let's put out one of these. Let's hold the land. We're probably going to have to start bouncing. Faye wishes at some point to stay in the game. We can still fetch a spyglass. Jesus. Crumbs is so obnoxious. And now they have Murderous Rider? I guess they drew that? Maybe? I don't know. Or they're just reading over the Karn again. Another Beanstalk Giant is here. I guess Prison Realm will have a job to do. So what's the play? If we get a Spyglass and put it on Oven, it means that if Karn dies, they still can't use Oven. What else could we name with Spyglass? We could name Thrashing Brontodon. Still doesn't stop the Casualties of War. But we get a look at their hand. That might make a difference. At the same time, I think True Love's Kiss on a Trail of Crumbs. They've already got three, but it does give, get us a card deeper, which is pretty crucial. And I guess we have this Beanstalk Giant to contend with, so we're probably playing a Prison Realm. So let's do the Spyglass thing this turn. Yeah, not much of a hand. I guess I could name Goose and try to slow their food down. Hope that they only have like the one Brontodon. Could also name the familiar to stop them from sacking. I guess that's not the worst. Let's see what's on top of our deck. One says good game. Don't know what that's about. To fairy? What do you do? Not much. I guess we can reset our Spyglass if we want to. Now that I think about it, Cauldron Familiar is probably better. Misplay. <laughs> then use it to stop my own misplay, I guess. All right, hit the opponent to 11. Do I go get True Love's Kiss here? It's mana efficient. I guess so. Could also get the Chandra. What's our opponent at? 11. Yeah, let's try to be a closer. I think I like that better. Yeah, they probably see that what I should have done is named Cauldron Familiar. There's a Corvold. And a Mayhem Devil. Yeah, their Trail of Crumbs is... Yeah, I messed up. But they only have one food. I guess Goose makes another, even though I didn't name it. So they have one, two Sacrifice Triggers. Corvold's the pain. Down to nine. Goosey goose. Well, they're going to take the Karn out. That turns on the oven again. So... Teferi can take out a Corvold. Let me show you how. Sorry, I'm late. Unfortunately, we have to leave the Devil intact with an oven that works. So that's pretty bad. But I think Corvold's the thing that we have to answer. 
So we legend rule their Corvold, and then we play Prison Realm for the other Corvold. Interesting. You have to, it's a sacrifice trigger? No, no, it's an enter the battlefield trigger. I got it. So down goes to Fairy. Opponent can sacrifice it to the oven now, I believe, because we didn't get a chance to kill the other one. There's not a lot to think about. You make two foods. Yep, you did it. So, now what? I guess we could find a Justice Strike for the Mayhem Devil. We haven't drawn any of those this game. Top of the deck is another Teferi. I suppose I really want that. In that case, let's play out the other Fae of Wishes. I don't think we're going to have much time to bounce these. So, I'm going to play this. Say go and hope I live. Being at 7 against Mayhem Devil from the food deck is a pretty bad place to be. And they do have double Mayhem Devil, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. They can't activate the Goose, but that's 5, 6. So they just need one more damage. Yeah, the misname on the Spyglass cost me. That was a pretty rough one. I'm not sure. Um, so, obviously if you're watching this, I kept the game in. It's one of those games where I'm not sure if I should show it because it kind of ended on turn four, but at the same time, there was a lot to it where you can learn a lot about how different cards interact in the food mirror and what not to do. I, you know, I apologize for some of the misplays. Definitely should have done something different with the spyglass and hopefully you can learn something from it. I'm going to call it there for the Granted Fires video. I think we showed most of what the deck is about and what a lot of the sideboard cards do. We didn't show any hard aggro matchups, which it's kind of weird that I didn't run into those today, but obviously the deck is well suited for that. Play the control game, remove their stuff, cast Enter the God Eternals when you get the chance. Uh, that's all you really need to know there. And the more complicated kind of longer matches, I think we showed a some good things from that so i think you'll like it again i'm sure i'll be healthy again soon i feel better today than i have in a few days and i've got plenty more decks that i want to dive in i haven't bothered brewing up queuing up and playing much with new decks mainly because when you're sick you don't really like your creativity is definitely suppressed when you're sick you kind of do the bare essentials to do what you need to do so you can go back to bed uh, and that's been what the last few days have been like, but I have plenty more in store. So hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying yourself. Consider getting a membership if you want some bonus videos. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.